So what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at this, we'll use Desmos eventually to solve them. So some of the harder ones, um, we can get them done quicker because what we want is for you to, to draw the graphs. You are going to be using Desmos to get the graph and be able to take points to be able to draw it accurately. All right. And so it's not just a case of rough sketching. That's why you need your pencil, your ruler. All right. So we're going to use Desmos to take points. But we're actually going to go through this nice, simple one first without Desmos, just so we can see how we could do it if we weren't allowed to use computers. All right. So we already know the solution to this one, don't we? Yeah? What, what's the solution to 3x minus 7 has to be less than 5? Oh, I was just asking for the answer, but yes, we, we would uh, add seven to both sides if we were going to solve it. And then x equals x is. Did we say x is less than? What did we say it's going to be? Four. Because as Hannah was saying, you don't need to write this bit down because you've already done this. Um, if we add the 7 to both sides, we get 3x's are less than 12. If we then divide by 3, we get x is less than 4. All right. Uh, so we've done that algebraically. What we want to be able to do is do it graphically. All right. So when we do it graphically, the first thing we need to do is split it back into its two equations. Remember when we're doing these things graphically, we've got a system of equations. So we had two equations sharing the same x and y. What's missing in there? The y. So what we're going to do, to be able to draw a graph, we have to put the y's back in. Any ideas what it would be? No? No one? Well, what if I said to you, the first equation would be, well, y equals 3x minus 7. Does that make sense? Now, you might think, oh, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but what's the second one? Well, I'm after a line now. Remember, a less than is... Um, a whole area, whole length, and a line is made up of points where you take the x and you, I know this one's a little bit trickier, but it is definitely y equals, but j instead of y less than, it's going to be y equals. What did you say? You were partly right, so just say it again. Five, yes. Y equals five. Now, you have met that kind of line before. I know you have because I'm just about to do it with my M3s. Right? Whether you remember that is another matter, but um, you definitely have. So if I asked you to describe what you think the line of Y equals five looks like, would you be able to tell me? Yeah. Right? yeah? Gordon can, he's got his hands up straight away, so I'm not going to ask him. Anyone else? What does the line y equals 5 look like? Not going to be a single point, but I get why that's normally what people say to start with. Dana? Say it again. Uh, no. It's not, well, I say no, x can be 0. If I put x equals 0 into this line, what value do I get out? What y value goes with it? 5. 
If I put x is 6 into that line, what's the y value that comes out, Alistair? Five. Five. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Exactly, right? Do you notice how this line, if I put x in, x being in the equation is going to change what the y is, yeah? If I put x is 1 into this, what does y come out as? What does this mean? Don't guess. Work it out. We did this the other day. If I put x... Negative 7. No. If I put x is 1 in, I can work out the y by doing what? Negative four. Negative four. There we go. How did you get that? Three times one is three. Two minus seven is nine. Yeah. Three times one is three. Take away seven. Negative four. Yeah. Wow. If x equals eight, y will equal. Three times eight is. Twenty-four minus seven is. 17. There you go. Those two go together. Now, what about this one? We've already said if x is 1 goes in, y equals? If x equals 9, y equals? If x equals negative 3, y equals? Do you, get, you see the difference in those two lines? Yeah? In these two lines, if I change the x, y is changed because y depends on the value of x that you pick and a couple of other things. In this line, it doesn't matter what value of x you pick, y is always 5. Do we know what that will look like if we draw it on a graph? Jordan? It would be a straight line parallel to x. It would be a straight line parallel to x, also called a what line? Can you all uh, put your arm in a way that would show a line parallel to X, please? Which one's the x-axis? If I've got a set of axes like that, that's upwards, this one's outwards, which one's the x-axis? This one. So if I've got a line parallel to x, it's going that way, right? What's that called? Horizontal. That one's called vertical. If I have a line where the y-coordinates always stay the same, that means the line is never going up, all right, so we stay horizontal, okay, so what we want to be able to do then is if we did, if we had Desmos, which we're going to in a bit, we're going to just throw these two equations in and uh, see what it looks like and then interpret those results, but what we're going to do is actually, because these ones are nice and simple, we are going to draw these to ourselves, okay. You've got your pencil and your ruler out ready to go. All right. Now, to be honest, what I've already given you is a method, one method, for being able to draw these lines. What have we already calculated that will help us draw the line? Take out that. Not to do parallel, well that might help us with that one, but we've got something on the board that is going to help us draw the lines. The x and y values, yeah? If I put these together and write it in a different way, if I write them like this, 1, negative 4, what have I just written? A coordinate. So that would be a point that would make, remember I said, a line is not a line. What is it? Louder. Infinite point. 
the number of points. By the way, if, if I'm going back watching these videos, it's going to sound weird. I'm going to have lots of questions in there. No one speaks loud enough for anyone to hear, let alone, you know, I'm struggling. So how the microphone picks it up for your review afterwards. So be confident. If you're wrong, it's not a problem. We can learn from that. But speak up. Be loud. What's the coordinate that goes with 8 and 17? 8, 17. All right. How many points do I need if I know the line is a straight line to know where the line is? Two. Two. Do I have enough points for 3x minus 7? Yeah. I do. Right. So I've already got two. How did I find those points? Was it magic? No. What did I do? How did I, what was the first thing I did though, as the person leaving this? Good. I chose a value for x. Did it matter which values I chose? No. Was there any magic decision about which values I chose? No. I just picked a couple, all right, could have been any, and worked out what the y had to be. These are independent of anything, I just made my decision. This value is dependent on the x value. Do you remember talking about the independent and dependent axes for same idea? So I have enough information here to draw a line. Can we draw it then? All right, you've written those chords down. I've got some square paper now. All right, um, what do my axes need to go to? Because what I've drawn, I need to go 17 down to negative 4 if I want to use all those points. All right. Jordan? I, because... So the first one, it's a y equals mx plus b calculation. Yeah. So the the minimum y value you could put in would be negative seven on the y axis. There is no uh, negative value. Uh, sorry, no minimum value I need to put sorry. in. Sorry. Do you mean I must no, choose? No. Sorry, that's the way to keep the graph the smallest, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. Okay. Because that's where the line crosses between the y. That's its y axis, right. negative seven. And then the slope is 3x, so you would move up by 3x. So that's the other method, right? I did the two coordinates methods. Gordon's using the using the gradient and intercept method, which is great as well. The gradient intercept, if you'll remember, the negative 7 is the y-intercept, y and then the gradient is you go across 1, up 3. So we could always use that, if you like. Um, so I'm going to... If I draw my line, right, um, straight, now I would always say, check what you're doing, all right, before you just start drawing everything in, I'm actually going to say that I need what, Gordon? Um, seven. Negative seven, seven, you said, yeah? Yeah. Um, and then I, so I, I put that somewhere near the bottom, and then I'm going to go negative six. And I'm, before I commit to this, I'm doing it nice in pencil, all right? Because if I need to change it, because uh, I'm going to ask you in a minute, before you write, I've just done that, guys. Is that any good for me? No. Why not? Because you still need the line that goes across y level five. Right. There's the second decision, right? That's no good to me because this other line here has to go through at five. So that did not work. So when you are drawing your axes, those are the decisions you have to make, all right? So what should we go with instead? Instead of two squares, I'm actually gonna do one square. So I can go negative, I'm gonna go just because it's easy for me. So negative seven, Negative six, negative five, negative three, negative one, one, three, five. I don't need to go any further than that. You might ask, why did I count up in odd numbers? Just did. So that's the negative one. Because it's harder to write in those numbers than it is in those. 
Yeah, I didn't write. I went up in twos. I was thinking, well, I could have started here at negative eight and gone there, but that's entirely up to you. So, to be honest, you don't necessarily need to copy that because my line for zero needs to go right in between the one and negative one, and it looks a bit weird, actually, because of the way I've done it, but I wanted to show you the negative seven. So there's my x-axis, and there's my y-axis. How do I number my x ones? Doesn't matter so much with my x. Now I've decided how high I need. One, two. I'm going to go two squares with this one. Go negative one, negative two. Oh, that's cool. Four. All right. So we've got our two methods. Uh, we could now plot the coordinates. Now the problem I've got with the coordinates is because I just drew this, this 8, 17 is not going to fit. But that's not a problem because we'll use Gordon's method, which was um, cross is at negative 7, has a slope of three. goes across the 1 that I've gone, up three. 3. So up 3 from negative 7 is... Negative four. Wait, wait, no, wait, I don't count squares. Use no, what you label this. your axis as. Okay. That's important. Across one, up three, so that would be at. See, this is where my labelling of my graph is not the clearest, easiest to, to do. So you, maybe you should do one clearer and better than mine. Cross one, up, one, two, three. Cross one, up, one, two. So I've used two squares to count as one on the x, but one square to count as one on the y. So these are all points that would be on my line. Cross one, up three. Um, I'm allowed to draw a line. If one of my points doesn't make a straight line, I've done something wrong. Sometimes I've plotted my points correctly, but my, my axes were labelled wrong. So if you get a, a line, you know it shouldn't be straight. We're in the middle. Okay. Would it make life any easier? I can just read. As long as I've got one square for one, maybe I should relabel mine. Look, I can go right. Two, four, six, eight. Is that, is that helps at all? Not changed anything there. Negative x is just a negative x is a little off. My negative x is a little off. You skipped two for negative one and negative two, and then another two for negative three and negative four. Each square is worth one, yeah? yeah. On your x. On my x, yeah. Here two squares is one. Oh, I guess, yeah, that should be a three, yeah. I miss that my three. All right, where's the other line going to go? Straight across one equals five. Let's do that. So now I've got that in there. So this line, it's always good to label your diagrams. So this line is the y equals 3x minus 7 line. This line here is the y equals 5 line. This point here, we recognize this as what? 
four and five. But we've used this point for other things. What is that important point? What does that show us? That shows the solution to a system of inequality. No. no. Shows us the solution to the system of equations. Right? This point here is when 3x minus 7 equals 5, yeah? That's what we were doing before. But what we want to know, okay, what we want to know is where does 3x minus 7, well, where is it less than 5? So this is the final piece of interpretation. So, this line here represents all the points that 3x minus 7 is, the x and the y. This line is all the points where y equals 5. This point here is where 3x minus 7 equals 5. So where do you think is shown by 3x minus 7 is less than 5? Okay. Uh, it's not actually an entire space in this case. All right. We still want the x and y values that go together for 3x minus 7. So actually, you've got the idea, but it is the it's this. We're looking where this line is under that line, yeah? Because this is less than, so I want under it. So what I need to do is find this point, I drop it down, look, I identify that that's 4, and which x values would I put in to get the line under this line? It would be this way, yeah? So if I were to show this result on a number line, you might see it looking like this, right? Um, actually, we're going to put a line, oh, we're going to put a line like this, why is that the wrong way around? Right, I'm going to go from four, I'm going to point it this way, all right? That means from 4, left. So I would interpret that as x must be less than 4. Why only less than and not equal to 4? Now, just to tell you something about the arrow that we just did, so I could show, just like you've just done here, my results on a number line, and that's basically what I've just done with this arrow. But at this point, at this end of the line, I must add something on. And I'm going to put a circle on the end of the line to show that that's the starting point of four. But... What's important, just in case you're about to do this, is the circle is an open circle, not a filled dot. Do you know what that would represent? So if I do a circle and point it that it way, a point. that would be five. I would be saying that x is greater than five. But if I did a solid dot, with an arrow starting at 5, I would be saying x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's a way of showing that that's the starting point. But if it's not equal to it, we have an open circle. If it is equal to it, we have a filled dot. Okay. But that's how I can solve them graphically. How do you feel about that? Any questions or? All right. 
Let's have a look at the next one then. We're not going to, well, we could do this one by hand, but I'm going to show you. Let's do it with Desmos. I don't know whether how much time we're going to have for, for you to get Desmos up. Maybe we'll work if we do it quick. I'll do it on my screen. But we need to make our first decision, which is what are the two equations? y equals 5x minus 7 and y equals 3x plus 9. Good, we've made that first step. Do you want to write that down? Okay. And then I will open this. Have you got those written down? Yeah, that was some of my uh, M5s we were looking at. Oh. All right, so tell me my two equations. Five x minus seven. Second equation. They're not crossing. What's the problem? Why is it wrong? Uh, they aren't parallel. You can zoom out there you go. That's all I wanted, yeah? I just want to be able to zoom out. Okay. Um, I'm just going to change my axis. I'm going to close in on the x-axis. So what would be reasonable values to put in? Minus 123 is too much. Uh, what do you think? Minus... 10, positive 10, it's a bit over, but let's, we can drag that, it works all right. Uh, should we change the y as well? Um, what do we not need? So we can do y is, that's a long way down. This is the point I'm interested in. It's all the way up here, look. So should we just start at zero and go up to 60? Every time I do that, it looks a bit different. There you go. I think that's a reasonable one. Um, so what you, would you do in this case? Uh, you are going to need to um, plot those graphs. Okay. How would you find the coordinates to be able to draw a graph accurately now from Desmos? Yeah, if you just go on it, look. If you press on the line, it will tell you some points. Zero, 09 is a point because we've got 3x plus 9. So there's one point there. All right. Here's another point, negative 3, 0. Two points, that's enough for the line, right? This point up here is the important one, right? 8 and 33. All right, so what I'll do, because uh, obviously I can do this, because uh, I'm not having to write it on paper. I'm just going to do this. This is going to appear in your book, but you're going to draw it for yourself. Let me get rid of the grid now. Um, the solution, this is how much quicker it's going to be with things. What's this point here? 833. All right. So just putting it in the same way as before, if I were to draw down here, what's that value? Eight. All right, so I want to know, this is where I didn't show you a graph. I want to know, where is 5x minus 7 greater than 3x plus 9? Which side of that? Which, which one is which? Can you tell without me going back? Well, which line is which first? The green line is... This point here is the 9. This point down here is the negative 7. So the blue line 
right? This is the blue one, this is the green one. And I want to know where the blue line is greater than, what does that mean, above or below? Above. Where's that? From this point and that way. So if I take this point here, which way am I going? Left or right? Right. So here's my arrow, it's going to go that way. I'm going to put a circle on the end, filled or not filled. Because and equal to. So that's showing it as an, on a number line, but my solution is x should be greater than or equal to 8. Okay. I think I was hearing those words come out of a very quiet mouth. When we don't have to wear masks, I'm hoping it's going to be like raucous, loud, I'm not going to be able to cope with the noise. Human that. Alright, how does that sound alright? So for you guys, what we're actually going to do is we're back to practice one. So you should have solutions to a lot of those. We did a lot together. I just want to now see. So what have we got? We've only got five minutes before the end of the lesson. So maybe have a look at one, see whether you can set it up, at least with the equations. Yeah, right. Maybe you can go through a couple and write out what the two equations are. So for the next lesson, you can go straight into Desmos. All right. Can you turn back to the thing I didn't get to finish writing it down? Okay. Thank you. But that's your task now. Yeah, that exercise. Yeah, I'm just waiting for a good one. Looking forward. You may get to see it. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, you should draw that in your notes, shouldn't you? That's probably a good use of this time.